to movie phones unscripted. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm Catherine O'Hara and I'm here, thank God, with Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. And we're going to talk about uh, a movie we're in for your consideration. And uh, we're going to be answering some of your questions. And we're going to ask each other some of your questions. And apparently we have questions of our own for each other, <laughs> which you'll be hearing as well as soon as we come up with them. But that's unscripted. That's what it's all about, isn't it? This is from Thomas in Tulsa. On whom did you base your character, Whitney Taylor Brown, of the Brown Diaper Dynasty? Because Whitney Taylor Brown wasn't very bright, I have to be careful about who I say I base this on. Do you want to go to the restaurant? Maybe. Mm. What sort do you like? I like, um, Letitian, Lesion. Lesion, that's a, that's like a wound. No, it's, um, it's Latin restaurants, but I don't know what the La word is. Latin restaurant. You mean like Mexican or? No, Latin. The people speak Latin. I do want to say that I stole little bits and pieces from some producers I worked with, and I think the most I took from one producer was a woman, and she sort of talked in vague terms, like, you know, I'm a producer, and, you know, we produce a lot of things, and we go to the places and uh, Sets. what she meant Sets. was locations. Locations. Yeah, she didn't know that. You know, you know I mean, she just didn't know <laughs> any of the lingo. What does a producer do? Lots of paying for sometimes ridiculous things like, like snacks. So I thought that was pretty funny that she didn't quite know the job, but she talked in vague terms. Like she'd be like, it's fantastic what I'm doing. I'm producing. <laughs> And I'm producing so much that it's just, it's the production is, is just great, producing the production. You know. Oh, sad. What's her name? Her name is... <laughs> from Gigi from Fayetteville, Indiana. This is the fourth project with the same central ensemble. How did you all meet? Hooray for Hollywood. That's gooey, bally, hooly, Hollywood. And action. And cut. Chris gathered us together. Yeah. Did you meet most people before doing this? No, yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have to remind you that I was in a grocery store, and I was, I mean, I didn't have one role, I don't think. I had, you know, I think I'd been in some off-Broadway off production, but I'd never been in anything. And you came up to me and said, oh, I saw you in The Groundlings. I couldn't believe that you would even speak, you know, come up and speak to me, and I was, like, standing there, and I... Get out I of was here. dressed. In Get my, out of here! I was dressed. I, I could. My outfit was made of straw because that's all I could afford <laughs> at the time. I came out of that grocery store. I was beaming. How would you feel about playing a man in your next movie? Uh, I'd like to do it sooner than later if I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> if I get too old, it will just. They'll think it's a man anyway. <laughs> It'll be a little too easy. <laughs> that would be just sad. So uh, I better get right on that. Would you be the woman to my man? Is that what you're offering, Jennifer? I've written this movie. It's about a husband and wife, and I definitely want to play the wife, but I like you more and more each day. And I think Who needs a man? Greg is from Dalton, Maryland. He wants to know, before this film, did you know a lot about Perm, and what kind of research did you do? No, but most Jews don't know much about Perm. I hope you like it as much as we like doing it. Someone's killed their children and made them into cookies, and I want to go see that. Uh -huh. And I asked everyone I knew. No one had any information other than one Jewish friend said, oh, it's the last holiday you'd actually go home for. It's like gathering the family for Halloween, apparently. <laughs> so uh, that was the extent of my research. This is from Shireen from Toronto, Canada. She says, even though this film, Catherine, is a satire, do you think that the awards buzz does actually change people. I think you're looking at an Academy Award nomination oh, also. <laughs> did, he, did he just say what I thought he said? What? Yes, Dicter! Oscars. I smell Oscars. You see what a little buzz can do in this town? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it changes some. I was at the Oscars uh, with my husband, and um, we saw one guy, I won't name him, but one guy who lost one year, and uh, he was all hyped up and he did that, you know, the phalanx of uh, Cameron, you know, the red carpet. He was on the red carpet working it for about two hours. I think he was the first one there that night. And then he didn't win, and we saw him out in the lobby right after his, uh, the winner in his category was announced, 
and his face had the look of somebody who'd just been told their whole family had been wiped out. Oh. And he's since recovered, and he works a lot, and he does well, but it was just, it obviously meant the world and yeah. beyond to him. Sean has a weird question here. What's the least glamorous thing you've ever done for money? Well, I think this one maybe kind of wins the prize. I got this phone call. I was very broke at the time. It was a job that paid $200 for the day, and they were looking for an actress and an actor to simulate a sex scene for a famous uh, director of photography. And I was told I would be allowed to wear a body stocking. But you know, what a body stocking is like being naked. Yeah, naked. I mean, you know, it shows every... <laughs> and so there I was with an actor. We had to like roll on top of each other. And there were all these like executives that were there. And all like came down to the set and it was like... Of course they did. You know, and <laughs> I think the actor might have had a Woody. I'm not sure, but it, I mean, I'm the whole sure thing he did. Was, the whole thing was like, man, I I hope I go back to waitressing. <laughs> Who have you been most flattered by? Of famous people uh, telling you they liked your work? Well, I don't know if this counts, but um, I did a movie with Hugh Grant, and um, he was sitting in the makeup chair next to me, and I envisioned him saying, I've seen you in, uh, in movies, and I think you're great. But he didn't say it, but I just... I fantasized that he said it. And uh, it was almost just as good. This is from Kyle. What's the best advice you've heard on your road to success? Meryl Streep, I worked with on a movie. And, uh, you know, from French Lieutenant's Woman and uh, Sophie's Choice and yeah. all these movies that I'd seen her in, I thought she must be so intense and unapproachable, unapproachable on a set. and. She must be so deeply in character, so method, and, and I'll just stay out of her way and watch her from afar. And she had very intense scenes that I witnessed uh, to do in the movie. And between takes, she was just like, so anyway, this guy in high school. Okay, so he asked me. She was, <laughs> I'm telling you, so loose and open and friendly. And then action. And it would just be the most beautiful, intense, real, beautiful acting. And then cut. Okay, what was I saying? Okay, so he comes up to my locker. She's just... So, as far as, I don't know about advice, she just, you know, instead of preaching, she just, uh, I just got to see her work. And that was really amazing, because I really have seen people kind of torture themselves in a way, you know, and, and uh, not act. From Renee, there's no accent, it might be Rini. Rini in Clearwater. <laughs> people in high school would describe you as... Tired. I was tired all the time. <laughs> I was, I don't know, I was just, you know, I hated the school lunches because there was, it was like meat and I didn't like meat. So I was, I'd have like a couple ice cream sandwiches and then it, I would have this terrible crash and I would be tired, I would be tired through most of my classes. Did you nap after school? Yes, everything, I was just, hor you know, horizontal, always. You know, you don't have to tell us everything. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine O'Hara, and I would also like to thank Movie Phone and all the people that sent in their great questions, and hopefully you will all go and see for your consideration. Bye-bye. I have a question for you. It's from Do Jules. I get to keep what I've won so far? Yes. If I get this wrong? Yes. Okay. We good at this or what? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm like two drunk people. <laughs> <laughs> Can I start this over? All right, Catherine, you ready? I'm a professional. <laughs> what was the question again?